So in this series, I want to build a LEMP stack, which is to say, I want to build a new server and put Linux, of course it comes with Linux, so I already have that, Nginx, MySQL, and PHP. And what I'm going to do is build the server in a way that is a little bit like Laravel Forge in its setup of how I run a PHP application. So the first thing I'm going to do is just log on into the server over here. And actually, I'm already logged in. The only thing I've done to this Ubuntu server is to log in so we can just get started immediately. Like most of my videos, it is a Ubuntu 16.04 server. So in the first video here, all I'm going to do is get Nginx and PHP installed, and then we'll get a Laravel application up and running. So I'll start with the basics. I'm going to do apt-get update to update the server's knowledge of what packages are available. And then once that's done, I'm going to install some basics that I do on pretty much every server, git, tmux, vim, curl, wget, zip, unzip, and htop. And then I can add a few repositories. So I'm going to do add apt repository. And I want you to know I'm not using sudo with these commands because I'm user root already, so I don't need to. I'm going to add two repositories. They're both going to be PPA repositories. And the first one is going to be Nginx development. Now I'm not getting the one called Nginx stable on purpose. The development is actually considered stable. It's their mainline branch, which is what they call mainline. So the mainline branch of Nginx, of their code for Nginx, is the stable version plus new bug fixes. And then eventually those will get marked as uh, stable. But they consider the mainline branch to be production ready, and so I typically use it, and you can get it using the Nginx development repository. All right, that's added, and I'm going to add a second one here, and that second one is going to be the one for PHP, and that is Andre slash PHP. This is a typical one to get the latest version of PHP, which is 7.1 as of this video. So those two are added. We can do apt-get update once again. Because we added these two repositories, we need to run apt-get update so that the server can grab from those two new repositories we added and know what packages are available. You can see it's doing that here with the Nginx and the Andre PHP. All right, so I'm going to just go ahead and install a bunch of stuff here. First thing will be Nginx, of course. And the PHP ones will be FPM, so we can send web requests from Nginx to PHP, and then CLI, which installs the PHP command line, and all the modules we use in our application, like Xdebug and curl and mcrypt and gd, and of course the MySQL, and all that good standard stuff. All right, that is all installed, so I can do Nginx-V, and we see we're on 1.11 and PHP-V, and we get 7.1.7. .7. Perfect. I can do PSAUX and I'll grep for PHP and we should be able to see PHP FPM is up and running as expected. Perfect. So the next thing I'm going to do is this one line command and this is going to install Composer. So I'm going to grab the installer, which is just a PHP script. I'm going to pipe it to PHP. This uses sudo. So if you're not logged in as user root, this will work. Uh, I'm logged in as user root. So sudo here is a little superfluous, but whatever. I just copy and paste from the same stuff that I tend to do on a server. And anyway, this is going to grab that PHP script, pipe it to PHP, and add the following flags to this installer script, which are the installation directory of user bin. And I'm going to call the file name composer instead of composer.far. So it downloads it, puts it in the right place, and then I can use composer on my server. Okay, great. So we are going to get to MySQL and actually also Redis in a future video. I'm not going to install those just yet. The first thing I'm going to do is actually get a web application up and running. And actually right before that, let's copy this IP and we'll see that we have Nginx up and running and it's just the default Nginx page. And that is inside of HTML here. And that is this default page. So the web root that Nginx comes out of the box configured to is var dub HTML and that's loading this default uh, Nginx Debian page. So not inside of HTML, but inside of rdubdub, I'm going to create a new project. Um, I'm not going to grab it, an existing project from Git or anything. I'm just going to install a new one. So we're going to do composer, create project, Laravel slash Laravel. And I'm going to grab the dev develop branch, which is going to be Laravel's latest 5.5, which is not a stable release yet, but it's pretty close. And we're going to put it in a new directory inside of rdubdub called my app. And I do want to remove existing VCS. And that'll do it. I have a Laravel application in my app. Now, of course, nothing is happening yet. Nginx is not pointed to the correct directory yet. So the next thing we need to do to get it to serve our PHP application is to edit Nginx. So I'm going to head to Etsy, Nginx, Sites Available, and we can list it out. We have this default site. And in fact, that's also in Sites Enabled. Inside of Sites Enabled is a symlink. And let's back up one directory. So Debian and Ubuntu servers typically have this convention where real configurations will be in an available directory, and then the ones we want enabled will be a symlink inside of sites enabled. 
So if I list out the just stuff in Sites Enabled again, we'll see that we have a default file, which is just a sim link to this file of the same name in Sites Available. So we know that the default file here is enabled because it's in the Sites Enabled directory, and that is where Nginx is going to read configurations from, right? So if I edit uh, nginx.conf, and I'll head to the bottom here, there'll be an include here, and it's going to include not from Sites Available, but from Sites Enabled and just anything inside of there. All right, so let's edit the sites available default file, and we will change this a little bit to get a server up and running. Uh, so first things first, this is listening on the IPv6 network. On my DigitalOcean droplet, I disabled that, so I don't need to listen on IPv6, I won't worry about that. We're not gonna cover um, SSL in this video, so I'll get rid of the stuff for SSL. I'll clean up some of these comments I don't care about. Okay, so this is simple enough for us to cover. We're gonna listen on port 80. So port 443 would be one if we were listening for an SSL connection. So that would look something like this. But we're not doing uh, an SSL connection in this uh, video series. I do have some video series on setting up SSL certificates. So don't worry about it right now. We're just gonna skip that. We're just gonna listen on port 80 for regular HTTP traffic. This is the only configuration on uh, the server for Nginx. So the default server here is a little superfluous. This is gonna be the default by the very nature of it being the only server configuration listening for web requests. But if I had others, we can mark one listening on each port as the default server for Nginx listening on a, any particular port. So I'm just gonna keep this as a default server for now. Now we're gonna jump down to server name two. This is typically where you put your host name. So if I was making a site called myapp.serviceforhackers.com, that would be the item I add on host name. And you can even do multiples. So you could do something like www.yoursite.com and yoursite.com to host a site that may need to respond to the www version and not www version of your site. Again, this doesn't really matter because I only have one configuration on the server. If you had multiple, then it would be important to set a server name up for each because that is how Nginx differentiates between each site. We're gonna keep it as an underscore here for now. Okay, so up here in root, their web root is var www HTML. I changed that, so I made it an application in var www my app, and actually for Laravel, the convention is to have the web root in the public directory inside of that. So that's our new web root, where our index.php file exists. Now the index file is the file it searches for if there's nothing in the URI. So here, if there's nothing in the URI, right? I'm not saying index html or anything like that i'm putting nothing instead so what it's going to do is that if there's nothing in the uri it's going to try to find index.html or index.htm or now index.php and we need a semicolon at the end of that now location block that needs a little bit of a change too what this is doing is trying relative to our rev root to find a file or directory in there so if i go to here and i say some directory it's not found because what it's trying to do is to go to var .dub, my app public and to try to find a file or directory named some directory. So it's going to try to find a file named some directory. And if it doesn't find it, it's going to try to find a directory named some directory. And if it doesn't find either, then it's returning a 404, which is what we are getting here. So instead of returning a 404, we're actually just going to send it off to the index.php file, which we know is there because it's a PHP application. And in addition to that, I want to grab any query strings that are sent to it. So I can say is args, which will print out a question mark if there is a query string. And then I can say args, which will give us a query string again, if there is one. So if I have some directory and then I say foo equals bar, if I have this query string present, that'll get passed to index.php. So I haven't uh, reloaded Nginx yet. So none of this configuration is yet sucked in. Okay, so we've changed our index block and of course our web root and we've changed location to send to index.php. We need to tell our application what to do for any file ending in .php. So that's what this location block is for. Any file ending in .php is gonna get sent down here for processing. So we're gonna include the snippets past PHP. What it does is just turns a web request into something that PHP can read. And then let's see, I'll get rid of the comments here. We're going to use this one. PHP FPM by default will listen on a Unix socket instead of a TCP socket. So we are going to keep with that convention. And we end up with this. And this just needs a slight tweak because we installed PHP 7.1 instead of 7.0. So that'll need a little bit of a tweak depending on what PHP version you have. And we should also also verify that this is the correct path. So this is going to take a web request. Anything that ends in .php will get sent to this Unix socket file where PHP FPM is listening for connections. So let's list out that file path. And we do see that PHP 7.1 FPM does in fact exist there. So that should work just fine. So 
I'm going to test the configuration with sudo nginx-t. It says the syntax is OK. If it was not OK, it would give me an error message. So if you are used to doing sudo service nginx config test, this will also tell you if there's an error or not. But then if there is an error, then you have to go searching in var log nginx. And inside of the error.log file, there'll be an error about that syntax or whatever issue there is. But sudo nginx-t is a quicker way to do that because it gives you an error message if there is one. So it said it's OK. We can do sudo service nginx reload and see if we get an application. Hint, we will not. We're going to get an error. Um, well, but we will see there's a PHP application, but we'll get an error first. You might actually get a wait screen of death if you're not in Laravel 5.5, but Laravel 5.5 has improved on that, so you don't get the wait screen of death as often. Instead, we get a permission denied error because it's trying to write to the log file, and it's trying to write to the Laravel log file because there's a previous error where it's trying to write to the cache directory to cache the view, the default view that Laravel comes with. So instead of a wait screen of death, we actually get an error here, which is really nice. And what are these links? I think these links will give you a search on the different platforms for that error. That is really nice. OK, anyway, side note. We have a permission error. Let's go see what that is. Let's go to var www my app. Everything in here is owned as user root because that's the user I'm currently logged in with, and that's the user I'm using to create files and all that good stuff. Now, Laravel needs to be able to write, or PHP needs to be able to write, to the bootstrap directory and the resources directory, both of which contain various caches. The bootstrap stuff has uh, framework-specific caches. The resources directory has view caches and other caches like the cache object, like when we do object caching inside of Laravel using the cache facade. So let's see what's going on. I'm going to search for PHP in my list of processes. So PSAUX and grep for PHP to search for processes named PHP. PHP FPM is here. We have a master process that's run as root. That's normal. PHP FPM, the web workers, the thing responding to web requests, is running as user and group www data. Now, because these directories are owned by user root, user www can't write to them, right? So the user root can read, write, and execute. So user root can do whatever it needs. The group root can read and execute, but not write. And other, which is www data, data data is not root, so it's other, can read, can execute, but it cannot write to the storage nor the bootstrap directory. So the easy change here, the better change than um, a chmod 0777, is to do a chone, change ownership, and we'll do it recursive. And we're going to change the owner to user and group www data. So I could say user www data. I could say user and group www data. Or I could do this handy shortcut where this will do user and group with the username and the colon after it. And I'm going to do the directories bootstrap and storage. So if I list this out again, we'll see www data is the user and group for bootstrap. www data is the user and group for storage and all the stuff underneath it because we did the dash capital R to make that a recursive change. And if I head over here, we'll see our default Laravel page because it can now write to those two directories as it needs to. OK, so that's it for the first video here. After this, we're going to move on and see how other things are configured. So we'll dig in a little bit to PHP FPM configuration, and we'll see about PHP modules and how to enable and disable them. And then we'll move on to making this a little bit more of a Forge-like setup to make this permission stuff we just worked through a little bit less of a hassle. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about MySQL and Redis.